Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. It's been one crazy week. In fact, it's been one crazy weekend. The last 72 hours have been wild. Uh, it's all because of Donald Trump. Uh, he creates the news. He makes the news. Uh, I hope this guy gets beat for all the reasons you already know. But it will all be nice to go back to a calmer existence as we knew it, where there won't be so many things happening every day, where they won't, there won't be as much news uh, every day. Because it does get tiring, and it's a lot of stuff to deal with every day. Uh, we're going to be all over the place tonight. Uh, we're going to be in Washington, Virginia, Canada, the Florida Keys, New York, Norway, South Bend, Indiana, China, Puerto Rico, Vietnam, Boston, and Almorada. I'll never make it through all of them. Because tonight, uh, I have to begin the show with what I describe as breaking news. That sounds like someone who's on TV now. Breaking news. But there's breaking news. Things have been happening since late this afternoon and up to an hour ago. And I would like to share them with you. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the first thing is the, st- the stock market dropped today 600 points. The Dow went down 600 points. And it went down 600 points after Trump announced that there would be no stimulus package till after the November election. He told his people to stop negotiating. The negotiations were going nowhere. And he was going to wait until after the election. And then he was, in typical Trump fashion, he says, I'm going to give this country and the people of this country the best stimulus package they could ever have. I'm going to tell you something right now. Should he win the election, he won't do it because he isn't going to give the people money. He won't have to give them anything. He won. Now, if he thinks he can buy them, and I'm sure he does, uh, he'll keep promising, but he won't deliver. I don't think he's going to win, so it won't make any difference. The shame of it all and where this man is wrong is that he forgets. There are people out there now who need money. They can't pay the mortgage. They can't pay their rent. These are ordinary people. I'm not talking about his multi-billionaire friends uh, who he took care of with the last stimulus package. There's no $1,200 that's going to come. There's no extra money added on to the unemployment compensation. People can't put food on the table. Uh, things are bad. Uh, pride is being gone. People, you know, if, unless you have a job, I agree with Biden on this. You must have a job to have pride. It gives you, it does give you dignity because you have a place where you belong and you're working to take care of yourself and your family. This is very, very important. Anyhow, so the market went down 600 points. Uh, I don't know what it's going to do tomorrow. Uh, I also think it's a disgrace, let me say this, that the stock market, it's changed. In the last few years, it's changed. I don't blame Trump for this. I blame the, the, the I would blame Wall Street, the, invest, the big banks, the investment companies. Uh, bullshit news causes the market to go up or the market to come down. It, the market doesn't depend on the strength of our various corporations. It depends on whether it's good news or it's bad news. And if it's bad news, it's not stable news. If it's not, sta- if not stable news, then, my God, something could go wrong and it could get worse. So there's the story there. Now we're going to another piece of breaking news. Uh, I read somewhere today that this is the age of distrust. We're living in a time of distrust. Uh, and it has to do with Donald, and it has to do with the bullshit that happened this past weekend. That's all part of it, uh, where he, the coronavirus uh, man here. Uh, well, I wrote in my blog yesterday morning that I question whether Trump sincerely, really had coronavirus, 
He was Hollywood. He is the personification of Hollywood. And I wouldn't put it past him to create the scenario and even get people to support him because everybody seems to support him on the Republican side. And he would do this to either gain sympathy or I don't know what. Or in his perverted mind, he doesn't realize it was stupid if he, he didn't have it and he was doing this. It also would exhibit a sense of recklessness on his part uh, because you just don't do things like this if you're the head of a country, a big country especially. Today, I started thinking, well, maybe the guy really was sick. Uh, I watched him yesterday. I watched him in the car on Sunday driving around. Uh, I watched him when he got in the helicopter to go back to the White House. I watched him when he went up those steps, huffing and puffing. I watched when he stood on the Truman balcony, and he was having a hard time breathing. It was obvious. And then his salute to this moment. I don't know why he saluted for 23 seconds. Great salute, though, I got to tell you. I've never seen his hand and his fingers and his thumb so firm. I don't know what he's what he was saluting. Perhaps there was a flag coming down. I don't know because all we saw was the helicopter. We didn't even see people on the lawn. Anyhow, he went up these stairs, and he had, it already was staged. He never goes up those steps onto the Truman balcony to enter the White House. But there was a series of American flags on each side of the doorway, and he waited several minutes before he walked in because they didn't have everything ready yet. He was going to make his dramatic entrance as he did through these open doors. Uh, now, comes today, comes this afternoon, and all of a sudden, I'm hearing, maybe he really doesn't have coronavirus. I'm beginning to think he does. But I said yesterday I didn't think he did. I could be wrong. I don't know yet, for real. But here's what happened today. The social media, social media doubts and exhibited their doubt that he really had coronavirus. Facebook deleted everything he wrote today. Everything he sent in, Facebook deleted. So I don't know what the hell he said, but it had to be about his sad 72 hours. Twitter hid all his tweets so you couldn't even find them. And Cornell University did a study today, and they said, based on their study, 38% of the people in our country do not believe Trump had or has coronavirus. Uh, I don't go that far. Yesterday I didn't even say definitely he did or did not. I said I strongly suspected he might not, and here's why. Uh, I could be wrong. Today I said I may have been wrong. I don't know. This guy's skillful. Let me tell you something. Now, another piece of breaking news. The White House, Trump, refuses, even till 5, 6 o'clock tonight, to reveal pertinent medical information regarding Trump's condition. I mean, I, I, this doctor he's got, that's a commander, he's the White House doctor, has to be a great job. Got to be a great job. Uh, but this guy, I wouldn't want him to be an admiral, and I wouldn't want him to be the captain of my ship if I, I were in a battle on the high seas. Because he's dancing to Trump's tune here. He isn't sharing the truth. You can see the man is covering things. I wouldn't say he was lying. He's covering. He was joking for a while. He, he, and, you know, I just can't tell you that. I can't say that. Well, it just so happens that everyone in this country, except perhaps Donald Trump, believes that the health of our president is something we should know. Okay? Definitely. Now, so let's find out why. And so some pertinent questions have been asked by the reporters. When was the last time did he have a negative test uh, for coronavirus? Remember, he's been telling us he's been tested every day. Well, you get negative, 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 ne negative, rather, and then all of a sudden it's positive. You got it. When was his last negative test? So we know, because there is a suspicion going on today also that, if he had coronavirus, and I suspect now he did, he got it before the debate last Tuesday. And that's why they're not saying when his last negative test was. Okay? All right. Now, let's see here. 
So that's one of the things. Looking at him yesterday, by the way, uh, he, he looked very tired going up those steps. He was sweating. Uh, he looked uncomfortable. Uh, he talked with bravado, though, when he spoke. The brief talk he made, it was with bravado. Uh, I feel good. I've been through COVID-19. Uh, I know everything about it now, and I'm going to tell you these things because I know I've experienced it. He doesn't know shit. Okay, even if he had it, he doesn't know. Uh He's making things up as he goes along. I believe he will, let me put it that way. Let me tell you about Key West Justice, okay? Key West Justice. And I think this particular incident is a proper one, a proper result, a just result, a good result. They should be doing this all over the state and all over the country. And let's stop screwing around with coronavirus because we're not going to get rid of the virus until we start doing things right. And doing things right is very simple. Wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands. The experts who are to believe, be believed say if we were doing that now, it would save us 100,000 lives over the next three months. Hard to believe because they believe there's going to be an acceleration in the deaths. Uh, we still have, we're in phase one of this coronavirus thing, and now we're going into phase two. We're going to have the two of them combined, so the numbers will be greater. There's a gentleman that lives down here in the Key West area by the name of Jose Antonia Ferrari Interian. 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 He's age 24. Uh, we had an order down here that uh, everyone. Uh, who had coronavirus, must quarantine themselves for 10 or 14 days. He had coronavirus. Everyone knew he had coronavirus. He came under the order. He did not quarantine himself. He went about his life as if he wasn't sick. Also, he refused to wear a face mask. So the police arrested him. I'm glad so finally somebody got arrested for something significant here. And the judge today, yesterday rather, I'm sorry, the judge yesterday sentenced him to two months in jail. And I think that's good. There should be more of these things so people can be aware, be made aware. There is a penalty to pay if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Now, I, I know it's hard to know what we're supposed to do because the governor and the president tell us one thing. Uh... And everyone else tells us something else. I'd rather believe the Fauci's of the world than Trump or anyone else. Staying with breaking news. Isn't this wild? I never did this before, but there was so much breaking news tonight. From about five on, I'm watching TV. I can't believe it. I got a pad in front of me. I'm making notes. Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller. We all know Stephen Miller. If you don't know who Stephen Miller is, he is a senior advisor to Trump. His office is next door to the Oval Office in the White House. He's in the West Wing. He is one of Trump's closest aides, perhaps the closest aide. Now, I call this man Joseph Goebbels. He reminds me of Joseph Goebbels. If you recall, Joseph Goebbels was Hitler's propaganda minister. He could lie with the best of them, them and Eventually, he gave Trump, not Trump, Hitler speeches where Hitler repeated the lies all after and after, and the people started to believe him, and he easily took over Germany. Well, Miller writes Trump speeches. He's a propag As Goebbels was the propaganda minister, I would describe Miller as the propaganda minister of the United States, okay, working directly for Donald Trump. So he has a great influence on the president. Uh president makes no speeches without his advice. He does little with, of anything without Miller's advice. The interesting thing is Miller does not seek any publicity. He stays in his office. He doesn't want his picture in the paper. He rarely makes a quote on anything. He is there to be smart, assist the president, because if he gets too much notoriety, he won't have that job anymore. So now he's got coronavirus. That's number 19 out of the White House, okay, so to speak, the White House group. Uh, his wife is the assistant to Vice President Pence. 
She had coronavirus earlier in the year. She's okay now. Maybe she'll get it again. We don't know if anybody can get it again. But that's his wife, and now he's got to spend 10 or 14 days at home, probably 14 days. Staying with breaking news. Isn't this amazing? This is nothing I prepared for. I spent hours preparing tonight's talk, and we've got all these new and exciting things, and more important than some of the things I was going to share with you. Newsweek magazine. Newsweek magazine. Today came up with something that it's, let me lay it on you. It's easier that way. Um, Let's see, how do I put this? It's that strange. Uh, A woman, Donna Lorraine, is a conservative commentator from California. She was a Republican candidate for Congress, lost. Uh, She's still an active conservative Republican. She said today, she said today that here's how Trump got coronavirus. I'm laughing. I can't help it. The Democrats deliberately infected Trump when last Tuesday, when they were setting up the microphone and the podium for the debate later in the day, the Democrats deliberately did something to the microphone and his podium so he would get the virus. He would get hit with coronavirus, COVID-19. Stupid. (laughs) I mean, I think I could see Trump doing that to a Democrat. Some of these far-right crazy Republicans doing that to a Democrat. I just can't see a Democrat doing that to a Republican. If they did, the people should be caught, should be charged, and should be tried, and they should go to jail. You just don't do that. I don't buy it. I don't know if you bought it. Uh, Now, this this story broke last Friday morning. Broke last Friday morning. And it's acknowledged this woman has no evidence to support her claim as to how this happened. Uh, But she says, she says, Trump was fine till the debate last Tuesday. And she claims it takes two or three days for the coronavirus to really manifest itself and come out so you know people got it, at the very least two or three days. And she says two or three days from Tuesday brings you to Friday, when Trump went to the hospital, Walter Reed. Uh, So she said it fits. So that's the story there. This, no one's, the the national media, other than Newsweek, hasn't reported on this. Uh, And it's been out there on the news through Newsweek since Friday. Uh, Whether they believe it, I don't know. I don't believe it. I'm sure they don't believe it. And they just don't want to give it publicity because it just doesn't make sense. But uh, I happened to accidentally come across it this evening. Then, Pence, Michael Pence, Vice President of the United States, one of the most religious men you will ever find. I mean this sincerely. And I compliment any person, male or female, who can have fervor, love of God, belief in God, to the extent Pence and his family do. I believe it's a unique thing. Anyhow, uh, he's a strange duck when it comes to religion. But I'm not talking about religion now. I'm talking about the debate that he and Kamala Harris are going to have tomorrow night. Harris said, because of all this crap with... Trump coming down with the virus and 18 other people around him coming down. That's the exact number, by the way, with the virus. Uh, She said, I want a plexiglass separator between myself and the vice president. The distance, they're going to use desks, by the way. They're not going to be standing. The distance between she and Pence should not be the seven feet decided upon, but should be even further, 12 feet. Uh, I mean, seven feet doesn't even, you know, if it's a vapor, it's going to carry. And she says we should have a plexiglass somehow. So I guess the way they did it is they were going to have a plexiglass along the side of Pence's desk, desks 12 feet apart, 
and a plexiglass barrier on her side with facing Trump. Pence said today, I don't want the plexiglass protection tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't want it. He just says he doesn't want it. She wants it. I don't. He continues. Pence continues to drink. I got to say this. He, 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 he's, you got to give him credit. As vice president, he's Trump's man. As vice president, Biden was Obama's man. And that's the way they should be. Uh, but I think in this unique situation we're going through with uh, the president in the last several months, that he shouldn't be. Uh, and so here's what I think. I think Pence, Mike Pence, he continues to drink the Kool-Aid, Trump's Kool-Aid. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, he doesn't talk negative about him. He lies for him. He's out of the commission, remember, on coronavirus. And, but Trump took over those, those things and would talk every, an hour every day as if, as if it were a campaign stop. Uh, the few times he's been uh, spoken, he lies. He lies. The president's doing a wonderful job with the virus and this and that. It's going to be an interesting debate tomorrow night, but I think because he's not taking the plexiglass, he's going to make her look like a coward. That's what he's trying to do. She's afraid. I'd be afraid, too. What's another five feet? And what's a plexiglass partition? What store do you go into today? When you go to pay your bill, as you're checking out, there isn't a plexiglass partition between you and the store's employee. What doctor's office do you go to today where there is not a plexiglass partition between you and the medical staff? That's the way it is. And that's the way it is. And I, I think Harris is smart. I think he's being a fool. And that is the breaking news. Which, uh, you know, it took 22 minutes of my time, though, a lot of time. So let me get into some other things over here. Uh, I already talked about Trump and coming home from the hospital. Uh, now, is he cured? See, the press asked these questions. Uh, is he breathing all right? Has he need, needed oxygen? Now, the word is he's had oxygen two or three times. You only get the oxygen if you got a problem. And when was the last time he, he was negative? Is he negative now? The thought is he is not negative. He still has the virus. And here he is in the White House. And if he's sick, he should be upstairs in his apartment, laying on a bed or the couch, and not getting near anyone from his wife to his son, Baron. Okay? Uh, not downstairs working and saying to the public, look what a tough guy I am. It's, uh, nothing holds me down. Not realizing, because he's reckless and he doesn't think of other people, that he's spreading the germ to secret service men, to the staff. And there are people in the White House we never see who work there. Uh, and that's just the way he is. And that's the way he shouldn't be. Uh, so that's that there. Let's see, two to three weeks, why? The salute. Trump gave a salute last night. I still don't know. Trump's salute was 23 seconds. I didn't time. It's in the paper and on TV, 23 seconds. He gave the most perfect salute I have ever seen by any person. Boy, his hand, his fingers, his thumb, everything was firm. He didn't blink. He didn't blink. <laughs> he didn't blink. They say he's under the influence of the steroids, which makes you, which make you a little wacky upstairs. You get excited. You can do anything. Uh, I'll tell you who he reminded me of last night. Two people. He stood there when he got up to the Trum, uh, on Truman's balcony. He was up on Truman's balcony for for a good ten minutes. He looked straight ahead. His jaw was set and firm. Okay, which was unusual. He didn't show any wrinkles on his face because they said on the news this morning that he was wearing some kind of pancake makeup, peachy, so he would have that glow that he's accustomed to. But he, his face wasn't wrinkled. His eyes didn't move. I didn't even see him. His eyelids go up and down. I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm serious. And he looked straight ahead with that serious jaw. He reminded me of Benito Mussolini and George Scott, the actor, 
when he played Patton. Remember? Great movie. He got an Academy Award. He stood with that jaw, the same jaw that Donald Trump has. And they just look alike with the jaw. As Mussolini did, so did Patton, so does Trump. In addition, think about the beginning of that movie. Most of you must have seen it. Uh, Patton comes out. George Scott, in the form of Patton, comes out on the stage. He's got a ton of American flags behind him. Where do we see Donald Trump these days without a ton of American flags behind him? That's all right. He's the president. He can do what he wants. Now, I want to talk about the United States and Canada. We live next door to each other. We're neighbors. Our coronavirus situation is horrible. They're just terrific. Why? All right. Here's what's happened. Uh, we have over 200,000 deaths. We know that, 210,000 or 211,000 deaths. Canada, our next-door neighbor, has had zero deaths from the virus in the last six months. The United States, we are having 1,000 dead a die a day. If Canada hasn't had any deaths in six months, they haven't had any deaths by day either. Here in our country, we have 40,000 new coronavirus cases a day. Canada has only 500. Why? Because, very simply, they do what they're supposed to do. They understand. They wear their masks. They wash their hands. They social distance. School children. I was very concerned when we sent the kids back to school. Um, I'm not always right, and I'm happy to say when I'm not right. Uh, I thought we were going to have a disaster with these young kids. I'm talking about high school, middle school, grammar school, going back to school. Uh, we sent the, when I, we let the kids go back to college. They're older. The, the college kids were coming down with them. A lot of colleges have closed because the college students were coming down with the virus. Well, the difference must be the college students are really adults, and they, just like the rest of the United States, they're not listening about the masks and social distancing. Whereas it seems the young people of today, the high school students and down, they are paying attention because it isn't that these kids would not get coronavirus. They're not letting it get near them. Now, here's what's going on in the, in the state of Florida. We've had a lousy state. Everybody's getting sick. Big numbers. We've had three or four cases, school children coming down with coronavirus. All three or four are in the northern part around Key Largo of Monroe County here. Uh, in Key West, we've had no problems, no, no cases of somebody coming down with it, nobody dying or anything like that. I asked my grandson, who's a junior at the high school, Robert, I said, Robert, why isn't anybody getting sick? He said, I don't know, Papa. But as we talked, I could see why. They wear their masks. He says, we don't care. we got to wear them. We wear them. They only take them off for lunch. I wouldn't let them take it off even for lunch if they weren't separated. Anyhow, he says, we don't think about it. We do it because we're supposed to. And the kids in grammar school do it also. And that's what's being done all over the country in our, our lower school levels. The kids are wearing their masks. They don't understand they've got rights, that, that there's a constitution, et cetera, et cetera. They're doing what they're told. As we get older, uh, we don't want to do what we're told. We don't want to listen to anybody, even if it is for our good health. Let me talk quickly now. I'm running out of time. Vaccine. Trump, you know, Trump was saying a little while ago he was going to have it after January 1st. Then he said, I'm going to have it. By the election. <laughs> then he said, I'll have it around three or four days before the election. Recently, he said, I will have it in a month. This was before, before there was, was, was less than a month available. Then more recently, he said, we're going to have it in a week. And more recently than that, he says, we're going to have it in a matter of days. And last night on national television, when he came back from the hospital and he's on Truman's balcony, he said, and I quote, all right momentarily, momentarily, he's going to come up with the vaccine. Very few people are going to take it because it's not any good. Anyhow, I can't talk anymore. My time's up. i got about five seconds. Been nice being with you tonight. Look forward to being with you again next week.